Yeah, we were talking about Nintendo and um, what they're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, with them kind of not having a press conference, they're just kind of getting ahead of a game where I think it's eventually going for everyone. And in that we don't have to have press there, they don't have to show anyone or anything to any specific person because, you know, with Nintendo Direct and, you know, they're bringing all their games to Best Buys across the country, so... I mean, these people will actually get to play it before we ever get to write about it and talk about it. You know? I mean, they don't really need us. I don't know how many people do what we do, but they don't really need us to get the word out. If you really think about it, with all of these channels that everyone has, you know, whether it be the PlayStation blog or Twitch, fan sites, Twitter, everyone can get basically what they need unless they like a certain flavor of, of coverage, like if they like how Destructoid does it, you know, fine, we can give it to them. Uh, but otherwise, they can just go directly to the source. Uh, and if you look at it that way, you don't really need an E3. Uh, and that sucks to say because I love E3. Uh, you know, it's one of the highlights of my, what I do. I mean, I, I do certainly agree on that level about its diminishing relevance. Uh, if only for the fact that, especially over the past year, I've been very vocal about industry spending. And, and people wasting money and blowing budgets. And and this definitely falls into it, I think, when we have publishers pleading poverty and talking about how they're not making enough money off their games. And you see some of their booths at E3 and just the sheer expense of what it must be to build giant 12-foot-tall statues of your game hero and shower him with a fucking enough lights to power a Pink Floyd concert. And huge screens, so it looks like a fucking like Triple H could walk out of the booth at any minute, you know. Um, the sheer amount of money that must go into that, and and again, it might be one of the reasons why Nintendo is just sticking with the Nintendo Directs, because that's got to be a fuck ton of a lot cheaper than oh yeah, a huge dog and pony show of of renting out a space and getting a massive stage and lighting that and seating everyone and just. You know, having this massive light show, uh, and it, again, it's probably one of the reasons why Konami does what they do, where they have their little press conference the week before E3 and broadcast it online. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to do, and it's something I am certainly not against. It's something I'd actively encourage as someone who really does advocate against wild, irresponsible industry spending. Of course, that's easy for me to say because I am very lazy and don't like walking around show floors. <laughs> so if it didn't happen, I wouldn't lose too much. But uh, just from a sustainability aspect, and I don't like the ESA either, but just from the sustainability aspect, I uh, am all for companies cutting back and going more the Nintendo route than the big bombastic E3 route. I mean, I, I'm all for, like, people showing their wares at a show where the press of the world is going to be at. But on the other hand, man, that's the joy of my life is attending trade shows, and I hope that never ends. I mean, I love doing that. It's, they need to be able to flash around their bling somewhere. Yeah. Like, it, is, it is important. It's, it, it's that presence thing. And I'm not saying it needs to be as big and expensive and stupid as it is, but that's part of hype. It's part of generating excitement. And that's true. nothing does that better than having it all happen at one time in one place. Um, mm. So that aspect of it, I think, can't be replaced by streaming. I do think yeah. they have to be careful, though, because... There was one company that I always thought was the master of this kind of hype. They always had, in my opinion, the best E3 booth, uh, the best PAX presence, and they threw the best industry parties and had the best preview events. And the fact I'm talking about them in the past tense should give you a bit of a clue. Um, as to the fact I'm talking about THQ, who had giant fucking dreadnoughts at their E3 booths and had giant space marines in power armor walking around PAX. Uh, spared no expense when it came to renting out hotels and big factories and things to show off games. And obviously they're in the ground. And I'm not saying that kind of spending caused that directly, but I think that kind of spending was indicative of 
a lot of the reckless behavior that would contribute to the downfall of a company. Uh, and I would definitely say when you go to E3 or when you go to PAX, look for the guys that are just have the most extravagant booths at, e uh, at these events and question how long they're going to stay in business for, for sure. uh, yeah. being wise about it and, and doing more stuff like Nintendo's doing is probably going to be a, a, a much more significant part of E3's going forward. Um, and Nintendo probably won't be so much of an, of an anomaly uh, in future shows. They've always kind of been like hands off with trade shows anyway. I mean, they don't show up to the Tokyo game shows still. And that's one of the biggest trade shows in the world, period. You know, um, they just kind of do their own thing when they want. But I think, you know, overall for the industry, if you want to kind of fast forward look, my guess for like five years in the future is that uh, even the biggest companies are going to be really selective about what, you know, when they show up to these trade shows and how much they do. Otherwise, I think the standard is going to be that we're going to, every, it's going to stream, it's going to stream on their own, you know, stuff goes directly to the Xbox or, or the PS3 or PS4 or whatever. Um, and then, you know, they're, their, you know, stuff like the PlayStation blog will get the news out there. And then when they have something huge, they can be really selective and say, okay, this year, you know, we've got a new game console. Let's go to E3 and blow it up. Then they get to control the message more effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is what it's always about. Mm -hmm. The way that they kind of package up their 90-minute press conference is exactly how they want all of us to receive it. Uh, what they can't control is us getting in, playing these games, saying what we think honestly, and... Uh, that's why I think we'll always be relevant. As scary as some of this shit is to me, you know, I know that people want to know really what a gamer thinks about some of this stuff. You know, it's one thing to have this flashy streaming show or, or press conference or whatever. It's another to get a seasoned game player uh, that can actually decently talk about what they've seen and done. And uh, I hope to fuck that people, <laughs> you know, that people still want that and need that because that's, that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make us beg, damn it. We'll... Yeah, really. So, uh, I was a little worried when you spent a few minutes there going over how obsolete we've become. I know, I know. I think about it a lot. Um, this is why I made the transition to drawing NS Paint pictures of penises. It's it's more relevant, I think. Than... I'm ahead of the curve. When, yeah. when our main jobs all die, it will be the drawers <laughs> of the NS Paint penises that live on like cockroaches. Who is going to come out Smelling the most like roses of the, of the three. Sony, super easy. If I were a betting man, my money would be on Sony as well. Just based on what we know now. And, and, and well, why? Why then? Why do you have such a, a strong conviction? They have their shit together. Uh, it feels like they've got this on lock. It feels like they've been thinking a lot about it. The, whole, the way that the whole year was paced, from the way they came out of the gate slightly teething to leading up to this, uh, game announcements, you know, uh, PlayStation Network being awesome, and that it sounds like it's gonna continue to be awesome. Um, you know, and then really, I think the biggest thing for me is that when they did, even though they didn't show a system, which was fucking stupid, uh, when they came out of the gate in February, they were like, look, there's this, this, this game, this game, this game, this game. I mean, there was probably 25 minutes of that press conference that we, wasn't about games, maybe less. Uh, there was some tech talk and some other features, but the rest of it was just about the games and gameplay and features. To me, that's good. Uh, if, if the rumors are right about the pricing and they might come in under 350, that's good. I mean, we can't count on those rumors. Um, it just seems like they have their shit together. Uh, well, it seems like they learned from most of, if not all of their major mistakes from- Yeah, like, yeah. Like, they learned from happened. not having their shit together for so long. Exactly. You know, the, they, they, if they really learn from the PS3 launch in the following just two, two and a half fucked up years, then they should nail this. I mean, they should absolutely nail this. I think they need The only things they can mess up now on are price, really, in my mind, and launch titles, you know. Uh, but I think they're going to be fine on those. I think Sony needed the kicking it got at the beginning of this generation. Yeah. It, had, it had won the past two. You know, if we subscribe victories to generations, the you know the PS One and the PS Two dominated their respective gens. Sony was confident; it was arrogant; 
it thought it could come out and do the whole 599 US dollars thing and that would be fine and we'd all lap it up. Um, then Microsoft proved itself to be a lot tougher competition than they'd assumed and the Wii, of course, trounced everyone. Um, and I started this generation famously critical of, of Sony's behavior and the PS3's treatment, but the past few years, Sony has really had a turnaround from the frankly brilliant implementation of PlayStation Plus to the way it's adopted really interesting, genuinely unique uh, digital indie games to uh, even things like The Last of Us. And, and, and as much as I've criticized the story, I'm glad that a game like Heavy Rain exists and has been given the faith that Sony gave it, uh, the, it still maintained confidence in itself, but it's not hubris anymore. It's genuine, we yeah. know what we're doing confidence, the kind that Microsoft didn't show with the Xbox One reveal. The Xbox One reveal seemed desperate. It seemed cloying. It seemed like they knew where technology was going, but they didn't know how to deal with that. Whereas Sony, they're like, People are interested in social networks. Let's not try and cram it down their throat. Let's just whack a share button on the controller. Let people live stream their shit if they want to and integrate that with gaming. Don't just make it this separate thing. Integrate it. I mean, in many ways, that whole sharing thing on the, the PS4 is a lot more of a unified one console idea than the Xbox One, which is just scraps of other technology kind of bolted together like a Frankenstein's monster based on what we know now, disclaimer. But that, I think, is the difference. And I, I agree with Dale when he says Sony just looks like they've got it together and they know what they're doing. I think you're right. And that's the, the confidence versus arrogance line. That's really where they're showing, and, and it's showing in all sorts of ways. The self-publishing mm -hmm. on the platform is huge because it's, it's, not, it's making at least the appearance that they're not in their high tower and that they're going to allow other people to take advantage of their great platform instead of restricting and saying, no, no, these things aren't good enough for us. In a way, Microsoft seems to be closing themselves off more and saying, we want to be in control of your experience. I, I, or Sony thought, if you think about it. You know. It is. It absolutely is. I, I think the, the shoe is on the other foot now, uh, where Microsoft so succeeded in this last console mm -hmm. generation, even though they were very evenly matched to Sony throughout much of it. That was a perception, though. Well, and, and the, the leap in terms of how successful the first Xbox, Xbox. was compared to the 360. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, their upswing charts got to be tremendous. They must be thrilled. And in spite of all the issues that they had with the hardware on top of that. So it's very easy to see how they could come to the conclusion that they could shit on a plate and serve it as gold. I, I, I don't think that they necessarily think they can get away with anything that they want to, but they now know that they have to show the games, I think. And, and that's going to be where it is. I don't think they have a chance of turning around core gamer opinions on um, as compared to Sony. I think Sony's mm -hmm. just doing the more effective job overall. Well, uh, they've got yeah. more ammunition going into the show. They do. In Microsoft's defense, and, and some of the stuff is not defendable, especially the flubs on answering legitimate questions, you know, on, on game features. They just didn't have a lot of answers for a lot of stuff, and that sucks for us. But in their defense, their, their announcement and the event that I attended was simply an announcement. It was right. like, look, world, we have this game system. They didn't say, look, gamers, this is all the shit we have for you. If you really, you know, it makes sense for them to wait till E3 to tell us that stuff. Right. No, it does. The, the problem I had with the reveal event was that it was a CES event. It was. It was yeah. very much a CES event, yeah. yes. You know, and if... But they invited Gaming Press to it, which you well, so they did it after Sony, right? That's so right. it was they knew what they were time. getting into. I hope at least to some extent. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they I mean, if they'd done this in January at CES, yes. nobody would have batted exactly. an eye. In fact, they no, would have been thrilled. Yeah, it's not that I don't see the logic in what Microsoft did. I don't see the logic in the way Microsoft did it. Right, yes. and I mean. 
just some of the stuff they were coming out with after when they were like, oh, well, we got all of the stuff that people would hate out of the way first. And it's like, dude, if you've got a system that you want the world to be excited about, why do you need a separate press conference for stuff you've just admitted is shit? Why do that? Why can't you have a press conference that will amaze everybody rather than needing separate ones for different people? That doesn't show confidence again in your system. At the end of the day, if you bust in, or I should say fly in, the world's gaming press, like one person from each of the top outlets, and put them in your fucking headquarters uh, and show them a new game system, you'd better be ready to talk about games and what the, the fucking game system does for gamers. And they weren't, which is bad. Yeah. So, you know, I was defending them from, you know, it was just an announcement, but at the same time, come on. So hopefully E3 will fix that. Microsoft's acknowledging that E3 is where they show off their games. How come the past few E3s where they're talking about the Xbox 360, they still couldn't be fucked to talk about games? They were still fucking talking about ESPN and fucking television and justifying Xbox Live Gold's price by saying, oh, you can get fucking Facebook on it. That's where I have trouble having confidence that Microsoft is going to please gamers at E3 because for the past few years, their E3 conferences have been absolute shite. I, I hope I'm wrong. I would love it if we could be excited for both systems. Um, you know, nothing excites me more than, than a, a fresh console to, to cover and look into and discover all the stuff about. But just going off past experience and going off what Microsoft thought would be the best way to introduce a gaming system to the world without games, you, I, I can't say I'm confident yet that, that Microsoft's got it together. You know, going back to Sony, I'm glad for that, that I guess you want to call it tough love that we gave them for just kind of tripping over themselves for the first two or three years of the PS3's launch. Uh, and, you know, yeah, they learned a lot of lessons from that. Sony's gone through a lot of things in these past few years. Conrad mentioned them being up in a tower earlier. They're literally not in their tower anymore. They sold their New York HQ. We got rid of their Tokyo HQ. They're just kind of like bumming out, you know. I don't know if they're fucking working from home or Starbucks or whatever, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they've dialed back everything. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. You got so nice. a fucking MacBook with a fucking coffee <laughs> over table, Trenton looking over his shoulder. Amazing. I mean, that's what it feels like now, and it's like everything from their like their. You guys don't care about their camera division or TV or their computers, phones, all the, all their divisions, all of them have had this like really tough love from, from, you know, from the people that actually give a shit, you know, gamers were mad at Sony because they gave a shit, you know, and, and it's the same for all their divisions. And now that the money's down and now that they sell their headquarters and, you know, there's actually been a change in leadership in the company in a few places. And now they're like, fuck, we just need to hunker down and do what we do. And, it, you know, like Conrad was saying earlier, they're realizing that they fucked up before. And, and instead of being arrogant, they're just kind of cool, confident. They're, they're very humble about it to some extent, too. And, and I hear things that I never would have associated with Sony. <laughs> but, uh, earlier, uh, last week, uh, Jonathan Holmes had the, the Drinkbox guys uh, make guacamole on uh, Sub Holmes. <laughs> and they, they were describing the, the people who are doing indie relations right now are down with, to some extent, people will just be coming up to them and sh pitching them at events and being like, check this out, this is cool, and email exchanges start. And that, the thought that someone could just be walked up to who's associated with Sony and start a relationship mm -hmm. seems so alien to me from the company that I've known it as being this whole prior generation. I think that's really the wisest thing because, I mean, you look at the games, the, the games that were truly successful in the past five years, and it wasn't your big AAA games. We're talking about shit like Minecraft. Like, as much as people will hate to admit it, games like Angry Birds, these smaller games, these games developed by a few people that don't have massive AAA budgets, um, these are the games that get people's attention now, especially in this age where streaming is such a big thing. Um, games like Thomas Was Alone and games like Slender, The Arrival and Amnesia are making their names uh, online 
and yep. they're the games that I think are going to grow in importance over the next few years. And the companies that see that and the companies that appeal to that are the companies that are going to win. It's bad news for Microsoft that people are looking at the PS4 and thinking, that sounds excellent. That Sony has Jonathan Blow up on its stage, espousing, championing that system. To indie developers, Jonathan is clearly a guy to listen to. And if he is speaking highly, the man that speaks highly of very little, <laughs> that says something. Yeah. That's just it. Sony's, they're really investing in the future, and I, I don't know that everyone realizes that with, with the indie stuff in particular and the self-publishing, is that it's important now, but it's going to be increasingly important going forward. I got the Corgi thing, you know, we, if, if it all goes down, then you know, I can pull a BuzzFeed or whatever.